appreciate you in the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 45. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. It's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building. Introduce yourself to the audience. Hi, my name is Shaw Dancy, but my podcast is called Tea Talk with Shaw. Um, it's a weekly culture podcast where I just talk about everything that's going on. Shouts out to Shaw. We were talking about making this one happen for a little bit. She had a vacation situation that stopped us from making it happen the first time, but you see we right back at it. Yep. Okay, let's get through the rundown. Custom Hustle jerseys. Custom Hustle jerseys. If you're watching it on Mondays on the E-Block Radio Network's YouTube channel, you will see me in the Custom Hustle jersey. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Custom Hustle Jerseys. Pick your own names, numbers, colors, all of that good stuff. In and out of the country, in and out of the city, we can make it happen. H2H Cleaning. H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company. You follow that on Instagram at H2H Cleaning. Now we go through the rundown of the radio stations. Like I said, Monday, E-Block Radio Network, 2 o'clock every Monday. Tuesdays, GFT Radio Network every Tuesday, 2 p.m. for that situation as well. Wednesday, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. on this kickback app. Then we go to Thursday. Uh, that is the WTNUPhilly.com, 1230s on Thursdays. Friday is the I Say Podcast Radio Network, 10 a.m. on Friday. And then we close it out on Saturday with THC Radio Network at 10 a.m. Sundays are open. If you got a station, hit me up. We need to close the Sunday deal. We need the West Coast. So what's going on out there on the West Coast, y'all? Damn. Also, How to Hustle Seminars. How to Hustle Seminars are done at this point. You missed the live situation. That's on you. But we can sell you the archives at the same price that we were selling you the live situation. So just get with me and I will send you that information over. Okay, episode 45. Now, the topic we have today is, are we teaching young ladies the right things? Are we putting the right values into them? Are we showing them the ropes correctly? Or are we fucking this thing up? <laughs> we like to start with the guests off here on How to Hustle Podcast behind <laughs> I would have to say just right off the bat, absolutely not. We are not teaching our next generation of young women the right things. I think growing up as a millennial, we were taught, you know, most people had a mom, you know, that was showing them the regular good values of just having respect for yourself versus now these young women have so many other outside influences all over social media and the TV and reality shows and stuff, it's just showing them that being ratchet, being naked all the time, you know, getting your body done and hooking up with somebody famous is the best way to go about living your life versus naked and loud, naked yeah, and loud. Yeah, just, things. you know, <laughs> God, like we would look up to people like Claire Huxtable and like, you know, a Black female doctor you know doing her thing with her family now we have people to look up to like you know Ari or somebody who literally just had a baby with a ball player or rap. like any of the chicks on the Monday <laughs> or the Tuesday lineup on VH1 yeah I got you pretty much like and that and that to them is kind of the come up versus when we were younger we're like oh yeah we want to go to a want to go to college, you know, we want to do a different world situation and get with our friends and go to college and graduate, have families. And it's just not that way anymore. Like when you see what representation they're getting in the media and on TV and what is like blowing up, what's going viral on social media, it's not people living everyday lives. They're like falling in love with this fake fantasy um, that doesn't even really exist because a lot of these people are literally just renting these houses to be on these shows and everything is fake and filtered. And just... <laughs> there's absolutely z- uh, no way. Again, in my bad, if even two things, let me do this. One, I don't mean to demean or bash everybody on the cast of any of these different reality shows because uh, it's not everybody. Uh, two, no way in hell you move every six months. Everybody has a new house every time there's a new Right, city. every time. It's always somebody's birthday. Like, yeah, okay, we get it. You know, so it's just a TV show. But the problem with it's just a TV show is most people don't understand it's just entertainment. Like, mm-hmm. it's just like wrestling. The shit ain't real. You know, they already know he's going to break up with her. He's going to say she's pregnant. Like, they already know how these things are. He's already know how these things are going to go. Uh, one thing I messed up in the beginning, though, international hype is not just a hashtag, it's where life. Let the listeners know which city you're coming out of. Oh, um, I am coming out of Piscataway, which is a suburb of New Brunswick in New Jersey. 
So it's a little small town. Um, but yeah, basically New Jersey. I rep New Jersey all day, every day. Okay, I, like to, I like to throw that in every episode if I remember. <laughs> um, all right. So yes, to answer the question, we're definitely not. We, I mean, no, we're definitely not teaching young ladies the right things. Uh, as a whole, as a community, as a culture, no. Uh, we are showing them the ropes to the wrong shit. We are allowing them access to the wrong shit with these cell phones where you can easily go follow. First of all, if you're 12, you shouldn't have Instagram. Like, hmm. why is your 12-year-old on Instagram? Why is he or she following whoever? I don't even really want to throw nobody's name out there to make it seem like this is a bad session for them, that individual uh, specifically. But you know who these people are. Like, your daughter shouldn't be 12 following 26 bitches that just twerk all day. Like, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be trying to put it in her face and letting it be something that she's aspiring to do. Like you said, the generation that I grew up in, Claire Huxtable was the type of thing that she was looking for. She was looking for a wife. One, you're looking for a wife. Notice what I said there. Not a side chick or a we have an understanding or right. a <laughs> we do us. No, you were looking for a wife. You were looking for somebody who was nurturing, somebody who was caring, somebody who understood how to run a household. You as a man were then, those were the, like the qualities and the things that you was looking for. Now you might hear, I heard a 13 year old in a podcast saying like, man, you can't trust these bitches. Like, you're uh -huh. 13. Like, uh -huh. why are you not trusting them? Like, she's a child or not necessarily like a, she's a child, but I mean, these kids are growing up a little bit too fast. It's like you said, they're on Instagram, they're on Snapchat, they're on this, that, and whatever, and they got access to everything in the world. They got access that we didn't have back in the day. Like, I remember when a new song came on, and it was like, you had to be in the house on the radio to hear it. Now, yeah. you hear a new song came on, it came to your phone with a notification. <laughs> like, Yeah, hey, it's totally different. He but just dropped good. something new. Like. <laughs> Yeah, it's that's a good point. It's because women aren't being taught to respect themselves. Now, in turn, men aren't respecting women and everybody's trying to catch a lick or a come up. Nobody's being honest, especially when it comes to relationships. It's just like, you know, young women aren't being taught to respect themselves and have value for themselves. So they're just like, well, I want to date you for what you can give me. And then that spawns distrust in guys because now they're coming like, well, if you come in just to try to get something from me, I'm just going to get something from you before you could take it from me. So it's just like, it just really makes it into a messy, messy situation. Like who wants to deal with that? You don't trust them. They don't trust you. Everybody's looking over their shoulder because everybody's trying to have this fake idea of perfection. What is this? Like most people that have all this stuff, they're scamming to get it anyway. <laughs> people out here scamming. I mean, yeah, one that was definitely that's definitely the case. Um, it's a respect thing, though. Like we're not instilling into the young ladies these days, and we're focusing on the young ladies specifically for a reason, y'all. So you know, obviously, as you know, we do hear the inverse of these situations. So you know, the, the male episode will be coming a little bit later on. Um, but we don't put into them that you have to respect yourself, like that you have to have a certain value to yourself, that you are not just an object for somebody to use. Like I'm listening to an episode, a shout out to Bob and T. I'm listening to one of their most recent episodes where they were talking about uh, a young lady was, uh, I think she was 25 messing with a 55 year old. He's married and now he's taking care of her sugar daddy in the situation. And now him and his wife break up and he says, all right, well, I love her. I'm moving with her. And it's like, well, no, nah, nigga, we ain't in that type of situation. But it's like, so you yeah. valued yourself to just be used. You was valuing yourself just to be used for your parts. Like you right. didn't value yourself enough to have enough respect for your own self. Forget his situation. You didn't have enough respect for your own situation to say like, I won't be somebody that's just, as long as you pay my rent, you can do whatever you want with me. Like, mm -hmm. and that's a bad thing because this is a lot of the things that the, the young girls are doing. Like I was working at a high school a couple of years ago and like some of the shit that these little girls would be saying, like, like I would be like, I wish that I could really talk to you, but I know I ain't. The, I'm not going to say that to you because this is not the conversation that you and I need to have. You need right. to have. A, if you don't have a father around, there's an uncle, a cousin, or somebody needs to like step up on a male and a female side of things to like straighten you out and like help you out. And you got to be willing to listen to this shit. Yeah. 
Some of this stuff is like you might even throw it at him, and it's like they might not get it now, but maybe she'll get it when she's 23. Like she might be a lost cause at 16, and she's just not listening. It's just not gonna go through. But maybe at 23, she'll be like, you know what, Mister Such and Such, or my cousin, or my like you were saying, whoever was right about the shit. Yeah, I mean, you gotta just plant the seed. That's that's the thing. It's like you want these kids to have somebody in their life that's telling them what's really going on. Like, okay, it's fine to laugh and kiki. I still watch half of these reality shows when I feel like just watching something on TV. It's funny. It's entertainment. And like you said, it's written drama. And I also want to say, you know, shout out to these women. That's why I talk about half the time on my podcast. So, you know, get your bag or whatever. But as it relates to being a role model, obviously they would even say themselves, they're just not role models. And it's just not what they should be looking up to. So my hope is that they actually have real people in their lives that could tell them like, this is fake. That's not real. If you really want to know what things that matter in life, it's respecting yourself, having goals, having dreams, you know, living out some of the things that you want to do with yourself, investing in yourself, having your own, you know, that's another thing that came up this week with the whole situation that happened and, you know, Danny Lee and the baby, but it happens so many other times. And I feel like that's why so many people were triggered because, Young women are not being taught to have their own when it pertains to being in a relationship. They just think as soon as I find somebody that has more than what I have, I've hit the jackpot and I don't have to worry about anything. And this just goes to show, even if you have a child with a person, it's not a secure lifestyle. You still have to have your own place. You still have to have your own car, your own multiple streams of income. You know, and I hope that these young women have somebody in their lives that can tell them things like that because it's very important. And like you said, if they don't take it at 16, that's fine. But even if they can just go back in their early 20s and be like, you know what, I made some mistakes, but now I'm going to listen to this advice that I got when I was a teenager and just start doing things for myself, respecting myself, finding a partner who also respects me and really building something instead of trying to be out here trying to attain something that's not even real. Um, this also goes to us. The problem is us as well, because we're not doing a good enough job showing them, telling them, instilling these things into them, which are the things that you need to value and what things do you not value. You need to understand and know, like, this is something to aspire to. This is something just for you to watch. This is just a TV show. The problem with that is that they don't understand that because they think that you've never been 16 whether right. you're the parent the cousin or whatever they think that you don't know that but you have to be a better example you can't be sitting on instagram all day every day and never doing anything with them and then wonder why they're not productive or they are not somebody aspiring to do anything better yeah they know you go to work but they don't know what you're doing at work they don't see you they're not there so mm-hmm. you got to physically put it in front of them and put it in their face this is another thing like that you said it was a trigger for me was the uh I'm not a role model. The thing about that is we're all role models. You may not understand who you're a role model to because it might just be the little girl across the street who sees you getting up every morning going to work. When you going out the door to go to work, she's going down the street to catch the bus. But she knows Miss Such and Such is going out this door every day and she's going to get it. Mr. Such and Such, like the same situation. Like if you show them positive, if you show them this is the way, you're going to get some of them. You're not going to get everybody in any situation, whether it's positive, negative, or whatever. Yes. But it has to be something where we make an extra effort to try to bring them along younger and younger. You got to start trying to do these things. Like, you want to be the house that they feel comfortable to come to because if they're not coming to your house, they're going to somebody's house. And that's right. not saying that we allowing that you can have an orgy or you can have company or nothing goofy, but you got to make it to the point where they're comfortable enough and they understand like Mr. or Mrs. Damn, my brother was calling me. I missed his last couple of calls. Shout out to Bray. Um, <laughs> uh, you got to make it to where you instill in them that value is important and like them uh, respecting themselves is important and it's like you don't want to be somebody's plaything. You don't want to just be the latest thing to come and go, which is what most of these girls on these shows are, which is what the sad part is, is what most of these girls are aspiring to be, is just let me be the new girl that's casted on Love and Hip Hop or Marriage Boot Camp or so forth and so on, what the fuck ever. 
Right. Yeah. Definitely. And we it does fall on us. Like you could say you're not a role model all day long, but like you said, somebody is definitely watching and somebody is starting to model their life after you thinking, you know, my mom is cool, my aunts are cool, but they don't get to the bag like such and such. You know what I mean? And it just makes them feel like that's something that they'd rather do versus living a quote unquote normal life and, you know, getting a job and just having a nine to five or whatever the case may be. But it does fall on us. Like we need to talk to our young women and um, well, all young people, but specifically for this episode, our young women, because it does set the tone. You know, young women were to just across the board, raise the bar, then young men would step up. And then we would start to kind of put this back together versus everybody thinking everybody's cheating each other or trying to come up off each other. You know, like have you some said, respect for yourself. <laughs> something that you just said, though, the young women raising the bar makes the young man raise the bar. Mm -hmm. Anything that the woman does is a re the male is going to have a reaction because the most of the shit that we're doing is to try to attract you. So if you're telling me that the bar is here, that all I got to do is take you get something to eat and then I can knock you down, guess what? We're going to give you something oh, to eat. Okay. If you tell me that the bar is all I got to do is like six of your pictures on Instagram and then you're going to DM me and then it's going to go, that's what I'm going to do. If you tell me that the bar gets raised, if you start to put, if you start to put a value on you, then he starts to put a value on you. Like, yeah. Yeah. You have, it starts with you putting that value there. There's some girls you know, I can go at her, like I said, with six likes on Instagram and I can get her. And there's some girls that you know, I can't go at her like that. She's not going to go for that because somebody took the time to instill into her, excuse me, somebody took the time to instill into her that this is not what it is. Like, if this dude wants to be with you, he has to have a reason why he's trying to be with you. Like, he has to earn that. He doesn't just get to get it just because he wants it. Like, Right. It's different. It's, got, it's really different. That they want. It's, it's totally you know, different. Young people are like, well, all right, so I don't want to just be that easy girl. Okay, good, good. You shouldn't. But if I don't make it easy for him, there's so many other girls that are lined up to date him because this, you know, we're on social media. We have a million kids in our school and such and like that. And, you know, what I try to say to them is that just because it feels like the end of the world right now, it won't feel like that later. And a lot of people that think they're like hot shit and they peaked in high school, you won't be able to find them in your 30s and 40s. They'll just have fallen apart. Things will just have really went left for them. Just focus on you and focus on your goals. The right person will come into your life and compliment your life, whatever you already have going on. You don't have to change what you're doing to attract somebody or, you know, lower your standards because you feel like they'll go to the next person. Let them go to the next person. That's fine. <laughs> you don't this, need is, to be this is the problem. <laughs> See, this would be the problem that you need, like, a, you need that the women to understand is if he isn't, if this is your baseline, if he isn't showing you, if he's showing you that he's valuing these other girls because it's easier for him to get them, then he's not the guy for you. If he's not willing to put in this work to get you, then he's not the guy for you. <laughs> like, ah, my God. Because <laughs> it's like, damn, the dude, the dude respects it more when he had to go through more to get this girl. The mm -hmm. one that I could have easily just got, she's not the one that I'm looking to do anything long term with. She's the one that I'm just looking to send a you up text. Right. Like, you don't want to be shit even 35 still getting the you up text like right and that's the thing how long are you really gonna take that are you really gonna accept that you're gonna start accepting that and that'll be the rest of your life that's what i'm saying like you'll never be able to go to i want to turn this into something else so i want to step well then again i ain't even gonna say you ain't gonna be able to do it because the way shit goes now people are doing it's so many people <laughs> in the world that everybody's doing everything so right, you can never say never, but <laughs> well, I'm telling you, because some of these chicks I went to school with, it's like, wow, you are married, huh? Oh, that's what's up. I hope he don't kiss you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the, how many times have you seen? So when you get older, you have hindsight is 2020. Now you see people, you know, they were hot then they did their thing. Now they realize that there's not that much out there for them in the fast life. They come back. They find high school sweetheart or whoever wasn't having their bullshit back then. They get married, have kids, and have a whole thing. So it's like just because you have to walk away from somebody now 
because they won't meet your standards doesn't mean it's really the end, even for the two of you. I've seen it happen two or three times where it's like such, oh, I want to go to LA or I want to do this. I want to do that. They end up moving back home or in a neighboring area. But the next thing you know, you see them on Facebook together. So that's why I just say like, you know, focus on yourself, focus on your goals. The right person will come into your life, but running after these boys and, and trying to chase them or lowering your standards to try to get them. If there's just no way to win in that. And, you know, you don't want a guy like that. And they honestly don't need to be doing that either. So but this is the thing, like as a girl, it don't matter if you fat, black and ugly, fat, white and ugly, fat, whatever and ugly. Somebody wants you. There's always going to be a dude who wants you. So if you feel like I look like this and I'm never going to be able to attract that because I'm competing with this girl or that girl or that girl, there's always going to be somebody who wants you. And if you are a person who places a value on yourself, it starts off with how do you feel about you? Mm -hmm. If you place a value on yourself and understand that, like, oh, I don't want to be like my two cousins who's just, you know, they getting passed around and this, that or whatever. If you put a value on you, then he puts a value on you. This is what I was trying to get to was like, it's all about how you view yourself. If I view you and I know that you got low self-esteem and I know that you're sweet for it. Like I said, I can like a couple of your pictures and tell you you're cute and whatever and this a go. But mm -hmm. I know if this other girl is like, no, nah, you know, you can't go at her like that. Like, you know, <laughs> you got to really like, <laughs> buy us some flowers and you know what I'm <laughs> like, you got to really take it there with her. Like, but you got to understand that that starts with you and how you carry yourself, how you let somebody talk to you, how you uh, how you even treat yourself. Like if you're a person that keeps yourself up and you're a person that, like I said, it's no ain't none of that shit when you go over there to talk to her. Like, you know, you had to think like, all right, what I'm going to say to her because I can't just go out here with yo, shorty, come here. <laughs> like, like, no, <laughs> right, so, no it's true. That's very true. Yeah. Young ladies, please tighten it up. And us, like I said, the parents too. That's on us too. Because uh, I wasn't going to like generalize this about what I do with my daughters. I'm saying what nobody does with the kids, but we collectively, the collective we, we got to do a better job with the young ladies and the young men. We're going to get into the young men in another time in another episode. Um, now, let's dive a little bit into the podcast. Uh, how long have you been doing the podcast? So I've been doing the podcast a little over a year. Actually, yeah, a little over a year. It was a year in July. So a year and a few months. Um, I started it in the pandemic kind of just as like a passion project to just do something to occupy some time. Um, and my friends that I let listen to it will be like, oh, no, this is good. You should promote this and start to do stuff. So then I started getting a couple like, you know, um, advertisers and people that kind of just wanted to promote small businesses on the podcast. I made an Instagram page and, you know, all the time I'm just trying to make it like better and better as I go on. But yeah, it just started as something fun to do because I love to just talk about what's going on culturally on reality shows or, you know, something just comes up that just like catches my eye. It's basically like whatever um, I want to talk about that week. But yeah, that's the podcast, Tea Talk with Shaw. So this is one of the things that I told you that I like about your podcast is it's like the podcast news <laughs> where it's like uh, what was like uh, the Dan Rather and them used to give you like the nightly news and they give you the whole rundown and what they went on around the country and you do it in a short enough span of time that it's like the weekly news with you where you break down all of these different things and all of these different avenues of shit that's going on if it's a TV show like you said or current events or any of that type of thing. So that's the one of the things that I do like, because for me personally, I ain't a person who gives a shit what <laughs> such and such celebrity is doing today or tomorrow. Like, I don't follow any of these people on Instagram or Twitter because my news feed needs to be all podcasts because this is what I care about. This is what I'm trying to get. Uh, this is what I'm trying to obtain. So it's like knowing about what, who broke up with who I don't really give a fuck about that but I know I can come to you and I can figure <laughs> all of that out in a one stop shop and I don't need to follow 65 people on Instagram so salute to you right. um, <laughs> and also like I said, one of those things like uh, I was talking about in one of the seminars was find a way to make yourself different there's a billion podcasts that's out there and everybody's doing the same thing we're all talking about the same stuff we're all you know, it, it ain't a million different ways to ask questions. 
So to make yourself have a situation where it's like, this is a spot that nobody's filling and I'm going to put this, I'm going to plug this hole. is a great thing. So salute to you for that. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Um, tell me this now, even though your podcast is like, a, like I said, it's like a podcast news type of thing. Is there a favorite episode that you do have where you would say, I got to listen to blank if I'm a new listener? Ooh, favorite episode. I mean, I feel like my favorite episode is the one I la- latest record. Um, I would say right now my favorite episode is the last episode I recorded. I think it got a lot of love because a lot of people were um, could understand where I was coming from. It's about the baby and Danny Lee, but it's also just about anybody that's been in that situation and what you can learn from it and how you can move forward from being in a toxic relationship, especially one where you have children with the person. So I would say go listen to season two, episode 24. It just came out on Tuesday. Um, But if you want to listen to any of the episodes, I mean, they're all, some of the news may have gotten old, but the deep dives are all pretty good, I must say. And they're all just different things. Um, This week, we have another scammer episode coming up. I know people love those. So just scroll through and see which one sparks your fancy as far as a topic that you want to listen about. And let them know where to follow you at. Um, all my podcast is available at all major um, outlets: Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Um, anywhere you listen to podcasts, we are there under T Talk with Shaw. Okay, copy that. All right, before we close it out, this is the last one. I'm gonna ask you: What is your goal to reach with the podcast? My goal to reach with the podcast is to get a national sponsor. I think that's more of like a two to three year goal, but I guess an immediate goal would just be to close out this year with 5,000 total plays. So now we're right at like 4,200. So I think that's a doable goal. Copy that. I mean, hey, listen. So listen. (laughs) Yeah, copy. What's the first line of every episode of How to Hustle Podcast? Appreciate you hitting the button. Once you hit the button, I've already got the (laughs) download. So I appreciate it. Right. All right, y'all. That was episode 45. Was this one? Let's be sure now. Get the number right, Hype. Episode 45 of the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Appreciate you for coming on. We are out.